gospel where he's launching and making the big connection. Jesus has been wandering, go, walking with his uh, disciples from area to area. And here at the start of our Luke reading, and it came to pass as the days of his being taken up were being fulfilled, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. The days of his being taken up were being fulfilled. He set his face to go with intent to go to the cross. This is the story that this is all a part of being fulfilled. Christ used that language when he's talking about himself and all the, the readings of Moses, the prophets, the writings, all being fulfilled in him. So now, as we're in this next part of this story, as it's continuing, it's going on, we see the, the Holy Spirit entering into the story in a powerful way today in our, in our Pentecost reading. We get that reading with wind and flame and loud noise and the people gathering and, and hearing other languages. And it's so important that we realize today is a part of the full story. And it made me, it made me think of a movie, The Sound of Music. There's a scene in The Sound of Music that I thought of with, I don't know why I thought of it, <laughs> with, with regard to this whole topic. Because if you're familiar with The, the Sound of Music, it's, if you haven't seen it yet, it's been out for a while. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the Von Trapp family. It's a, it's a wonderful musical. Um, there's, a, there's a young nun, Maria, that is, um, becomes a governess for this captain's family with, with seven kids. And, and we know the, the, the wonders of the musical with her getting immersed in their lives and becoming friends with them through all the, the music and... And then there's, there's, a, there's a dance scene where she dances with the captain and there's a little spark there and she goes running back to the, the abbey to kind of get away from those feelings and nun sends her back to, to be with the, the family. And, and it's just amazing following that and that one kind of plot line, seeing that they fall in love and there's this grand wedding scene the bold wedding scene with the camera backing up and the music is crescendoing and you could think this is what it's all about. This is the movie right here and it could end right there, but it doesn't. That's not the focus. There's a whole adventure of the film that's bigger than that, of the people in Austria being occupied by the Third Reich and the movie keeps going. There's that part, those scenes, but there's more to the story. There's the whole Von Trapp family finding a way to escape the country and leave, and, and it ends kind of with them going over the, the mountain, the movie does, them going over the mountainside. In the, the book of Acts, we have the continuing of one story that involves you. This isn't for us to just look at and see. It, in, it involves you. All these scenes of God's people are now peaking. And they're, the Holy Spirit is pointing out that this is about your walk with him. So Acts starts off. Jesus is risen from the dead. There's a great start to a, a, a story. Jesus is risen from the dead. We build up a little bit. He meets with his disciples for quite a while and he's teaching with them and eventually he ascends to his throne. And now today, as he told them, I don't want you to leave this area, stay here, gather, and gather here, and they're together in a room and this is the day of Pentecost. He's told them to wait here till power comes from on high and as they're gathered on this feast day, the incredible events of what we call Pentecost happens. So let's explore that a little bit. This Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, has been going on for centuries. People have been gathering. That's why they're all there in Jerusalem for this, this 
yearly feast event. It's one of those, those pilgrimage feasts where if you can, you travel to where the, the temple is. And so Jews from all over are, are gathered there. And there's, a, there's kind of some controversy involved with some of the, the dates of the Feast of Weeks, because as you explore in Scripture about, it's supposed to start, there's seven Sabbaths, so seven weeks of seven, 49, and then on the next day, the 50th day, have this feast day, and it wasn't quite sure about when it was supposed to start, if you're looking in Leviticus, after the harvest, but the Pharisees end up solving that, and the Pharisees come up with a specific day, and so um, now, here it is, it's the, the 50th day. And there's been, there's a, there's a lot of uh, tradition that goes with this. It's kind of a countdown that the people do. It's the, this is to take a, a, a sheaf of, of grain and wave it, an omer. And there's a countdown of the omers where you count down every day. So you're building towards this particular day. And then we have the, the grand events. So... In Jesus' day, this feast had kind of, when they celebrated at the temple, it was about God's word being given to the Hebrew people and them living as the chosen ones with his words. So let's picture the apostles. They're gathered in this room. They have years of history in their life of celebrating this feast day that's been going on there's been the whole countdown going on in the world around him i think i like to picture each of those apostles when when they were called when they had a moment where they said i'm gonna follow him they go from kind of being enamored with him a little bit there's something to where i'm gonna follow him i like to picture did they have any idea what was in store for the days ahead they're they're gonna see they're gonna see incredible things and he doesn't tell them what they're gonna see he says come follow they're gonna see miraculous things they're gonna see people chasing them from towns they're gonna see suffering they're gonna experience incredible wonder and joy but they don't know that at this time. They're just asked to follow. And here is one of those days where it's like, wow. The Holy Spirit comes rushing into the room. All the images throughout Scripture get packaged for us here at Pentecost. We have, we have the whole um, story uh, with the imagery being connected and brought in. Jesus has risen to new life, right? And he's now connected into his people, his church, in, in this special way of the Holy Spirit coming and breathing into them. We have the imagery of fire, the imagery of wind. God's people, his church, on this Pentecost day, kind of, are empowered to say, I'm with you and I'm in you. And this, this is you. This is you, the church, that can picture all this imagery. In the, in the beginning of our Bibles, we're talking big picture. In the beginning of our Bibles, we see people are to, to go, spread, multiply, carry the image of God with you. Listen, hear, O Israel, listen, right? We know that doesn't work out well. The people end up falling. When the next we see the people gathered together, what are they doing? They're building a city for themselves to their own purposes. God scatters that. We see then the, the nation is called, the chosen one, the na as a serv God's servant is the nation of Israel called to listen and to care for his word and impact the world. And we know that doesn't turn out great. And then in Isaiah chapter 53, we see that there's one who says, here I am, the, the servant. And the, the whole nation gets whittled down to one who will listen to the Father's will. And 
and will be that, that one representative for all people. So this is, the, this is the story that we follow as Christ goes to His cross and wins the way on His cross for all people to be in right with God. So now we make sure and keep following the story where the people are gathered here at Pentecost. And Christ said, and power will come from on high. What was he referring to? They gather, and the Holy Spirit comes, and he's all the imagery that we can picture. He's there with them and in them through this walk of faith. And what results from that? They spread, and they go back and share the word with the world around. This is the church. This is you. You are the ones with the Holy Spirit inside, touching the world around. We had a focus on the Feast of Pentecost, these seven Sabbaths, and then a, another new day after that. All the, the imagery of, of you being the, the new people of God. It's just great to connect all the, the pictures together and think of yourself in the story. That's, we don't look at it and follow scenes from afar. You are in it. And it's a continuing story. Just like the, the movie we talked about. It goes on. You have to have all the parts together. Because it's not just them. It's us. He won that victory over sin and death for us. So, as His people, the mission continues. You're, you're His hands and hearts today. When He talks about living with a peace that goes beyond understanding, He wants you to carry that into your neighborhoods. As people see their situations going on in your life that shouldn't result in peace, but you have a peace inside. What is that, Pete? Let me, let me know about that. You have the opportunity to carry his name well into the world around you. Feeling his love, knowing who's with you and in you and his power, and then getting to touch lives with that. That's the wonder of, of being his church here today. And that's our, that's our challenge as well. So long as the world stands, you have a mission. You have a mission to take that good news and spread it with the world around. And we have the great opportunity to not just do that as individuals, but we get to come together as a church and team up all our skills and talents and ways and, and team up and do ministry together. So this Pentecost brings hope. Hope to the hopeless, hope to you, hope to the world. And we get to live with the wonder of that all our days until we do see him face to face. Amen.